During the Second World War, Manila, known as the Pearl of the Orient, bore witness to the courage and sacrifice of U.S. forces and Filipino fighters. The Battle of Manila was part of the Battle for Luzon. So overall, it was part of the Philippine Liberation Campaign. The Filipinos and Americans fought side by side. There was a race to save Filipino civilians, prisoners of war, civilian internees from being massacred by the Japanese in the places that were converted by the Japanese into camps. The University of Santo Tomas, located in Manila, had two campuses during the war. From 1942 to 1945, the San Paolo campus served as an internment camp for more than 3,000 individuals, mostly American civilians. It has the biggest building in the city. It also has a very wide open field. It's also surrounded by a uh, steel fence. So it's a nice place to confine people. For Leslie Ann Murray, the experience was more personal. She was one of the internees, along with her parents. Went into the camp when I was two years old. My most vivid memory is the red sky over Manila. Everything was burning. I, to this day, I don't like uh, to hear gunfire, explosive you know, fireworks or anything like that. It's disturbing. The living condition was bad. It was actually putrid because you're all crowded in the same place. Men and women were separated, families were separated. We were very, very tightly. I think there was just enough room for people to, to pass. And everybody was very mindful of their space. If anybody encroached, an argument could, could result. Interns demanded that they be kept as a family. And so the Japanese commander allowed them to have shacks but without walls so that he can see them. My father built one for us. We spent time out there. During the day, at night, we had to go back. When we first went in, they allowed a package line so people could bring supplies. The Filipinos would bring, would share the, the food, whatever they had. Eventually, the, the Japanese stopped the, the, the line. They didn't like the fact that the Filipinos were helping the Americans. Filipinos who sympathize with the internees, they would uh, either throw food over the Sawali fence or slip food under the fence. Life just sort of went on. One of the things we do is, is catch the fireflies and watch them, you know, during the night just flashing their lights. So it was, that was our entertainment. Many of the um, internees were teachers, professors, so they set up schools and uh, fortunately the Japanese allowed us. I can remember attending a little kindergarten class. The prisoners were given leeway by the Japanese, allowing them to organize themselves. In the beginning, we were being better fed, and then as the war got difficult for the Japanese, it was the Americans were, were on the winning side. The Japanese took it out on the prisoners by cutting the food. We really basically had lugao and uh, dilis. An outstanding feature of the camp would be the lines. It takes us uh, several hours, especially for water. You have to wake up at 4 a.m. We had to stand in line for food. We stood in line to go to the bathroom. I think that's why to this day, I, I don't like standing in a line anywhere. On January 31st, 1945, three years after Leslie and many others were interned in UST, Hope Spring. General Douglas MacArthur commanded the U.S. Army's 1st Cavalry Division to liberate Japanese-occupied locations. The style of MacArthur, he made them compete. Who would reach Manila first? The American force, American flying column, came from Gimba in Baisiha and slicing through enemy-held territory. The American force was lost. And they saw a jeep with Filipino guerrillas aboard and uh, a guerrilla leader, his name was Colonel uh, Manuel Colaico. So he guided the lead tank. On February 3rd, 1945, the Liberators finally reached UST. It was great, great joy, great, great joy after three years. On February 7th, 1945, General Douglas MacArthur visited the UST internees. Months later, UST conferred upon him an honorary Doctor of Laws degree. An honor which I shall treasure in reverent appreciation all of the days of my life. On February 3rd, 2020, UST commemorated the 75th anniversary of the liberation of the prison camp. 
Today, we remember and pay tribute to the people who bonded together and fought side by side right here 75 years ago, becoming allies for freedom. The best way for us to honor them is by taking our relationship forward, by seizing opportunities to strengthen our partnership and taking on future challenges together as friends, partners, and allies. Leslie, who has lived in the Philippines for many years, was among the speakers. Please research, familiarize yourself with World War II history in the Philippines. It is your history.